While you've probably heard of Gundam's 35th anniversary back in 2014, unless you're tuned into Japanese news, you might not know that another mega series rivaling Gundam in popularity is having its 35th in this year, 2017. That series is called Macross. How does a series as beloved in Japan as Macross fail to release anything in the West for almost two decades? To get to the bottom of this, we have to go all the way back to Macross's creation in the early 1980s. Much like the anime of today, Macross was created by committee, with three companies divvying up responsibilities and rights. Without delving too far into irrelevant information, Tatsunoko Productions, who did the bulk of the actual animation, were granted the international distribution rights including merchandise for the Super Dimensional Fortress Macross anime. Specifying the original anime itself is a distinction that will soon be very relevant. In 1984, American company Harmony Gold bought the rights to SDF Macross from Tatsunoko in order to use it and its merchandise in their Robotech brand. Macross was the first arc in a story that also used Southern Cross and Genesis Climber Mospita. For a while, everything proceeded as one might expect, with Macross Do You Remember Love, Macross 2, and Macross Plus being released in the West via licensing from Toho and Big West, respectively. Things got hairy again in 1999 and again in 2002 when Harmony Gold attempted to enforce their perceived license rights by trademarking the word Macross in the USA, Canada, Germany, and the UK. The issue here is that Tatsunoko never owned the intellectual property rights to sell the Harmony Gold, just the film distribution rights. In the early 2000s, the three companies originally involved in the production of SDF Macross hit the Japanese copyright courts to determine once and for all who owned which rights. When the dust settled in 2005, nothing had changed. Tatsunoko only had the rights to the physical animation, that is to say, not the intellectual property of the Macross series, and the international distribution rights of the SDF anime. When faced with this result, Harmony Gold doubled down, stating that the Japanese court's rulings have no bearings on their trademark claims in the West. Given their still valid, in the court's eyes, trademark claim, this has prevented any Macross material from being released overseas. Until one of the original Japanese copyright holders decide to take Harmony Gold to court in the US, it is unlikely that we will ever see new Macross officially released anywhere outside of Asia. The original creator and mastermind behind Macross, Shoji Kawamori, made an appearance at Anime Expo in 2015 while the newest entry, Macross Delta, was airing. While he was there to promote a new project, most of the Q&A portion of his panel was unsurprisingly devoted to questions about Macross Delta. When asked straight up about how he felt about Harmony Gold and their litigious ways, his response was frank. Kalmori said that he and the rest of the Macross team are disappointed that they can't share their works with the rest of the world in an easy way, but due to the nature of the issue, there is not much hope for that to be fixed. After that response, he continued on to say that the Japanese Blu-ray releases from Macross Delta will have English subtitles and that he hopes for his English fans' continued support. Additionally, SDF Macross, Southern Cross, and Mospita are available for streaming on Amazon Prime as of the time of this recording. Everything in the preceding part of this video is fact, presented as unbiased as possible. What follows is some parts speculation, most parts hate, and most certainly biased. Harmony Gold sucks, let's get that out of the way. They're a little more than copyright trolls at best, and might be a laundering front at worst. As horrible as those allegations are, they are not the least bit unfounded. You might be wondering why Harmony Gold failed to whip their litigious dick out while Do You Remember Love, Macross 2, and Macross Plus were released. The reason is simple, they'd stop their film distribution business and move to working in South California real estate to easily embezzle cash. No, no. Excuse me, allegedly embezzle cash. Thank you. In the early 2000s, Harmony Gold and its founder had their bank accounts frozen by Italian investigators on suspicion of tax fraud and embezzlement. This timing coincides with Harmony Gold using the Macross name to copyright troll anyone having anything remotely to do with Macross or its designs. While charges against the founder were eventually dropped, most other parties involved in the embezzlement scheme were convicted. Oh, and by the way, the charges were dropped due to the statute of limitations. It would be one thing if Harmony Gold used the Macross name to do more than copyright troll, but the last time they used the property in a meaningful way was in the 90s. There are countless Macross fans outside of Japan who have been deprived of hours upon hours of new content in the form of anime, films, music, and games. Also, this shitty company could keep using the name Robotech to make a few bucks off of companies who'd otherwise do the series justice. 
Needless to say, this has earned Harmony Gold the ire of myself and pretty much any Macross fan or Robotech fan out there who's looked deep enough to find out about Macross. Them popping up every few years to promise some new Robotech piece of shit to renew their trademarks really just rubs salt into the wound. But hey, they said they have a live-action Robotech in the works, so there's that, I guess. Oh,